Hi, welcome to the Laws of the Three Weeks with the Mishnah Brewer. We're on Simon Tov Kufnan Aleph 551, Seif Yud Zayin, number 17. Tov li Zahir Melomar Shechianu ben Hamitzarim al Pri o al Mabush. It is good to not make the Shechianu blessing during the three weeks, whether it's on a fruit or on a piece of clothing. So when a person gets a new piece of clothing that he's very happy about, not just any piece of clothing, but something that brings joy, brings simcha, for example, uh, a suit, a person gets a new suit, or perhaps a, a new talus, something a man at least would be very happy about, so he makes a blessing, make, makes a shechianu blessing when he wears it for the first time. Or a fruit, a fruit that a person hasn't eaten in a year, he makes or never had in his life, he'll make a shechianu blessing. So we'll soon see why, but we should not make that blessing during the three weeks. Continues the Shulchan Aruch. Aval al pidyon haben omer v'loyach mitzvah mitzvah. But if someone has a pidyon haben, someone's redeeming their firstborn child from the kohen, he makes a shehachianu. He should still have the pidyon haben during the three weeks, and he should not push off the mitzvah. Bepri shaloyim tzacher tishbav muter levarik laachol ben mitzvah. If you have a fruit that you're not going to be able to find after tishbav, then you could eat it, and you don't have to push it off, and you can make the shehachianu blessing. So let's see what the Mishnah Brewer says here. Tov lizar melomer shechianu. It's good to not say shechianu. It's good to be careful not to say shechianu. Afal gav dafilo avam avar shechianu. Even though we see that even someone in mourning over a parent or a relative is able to say the shechianu blessing. Now the shechianu blessing means we thank Hashem for bringing us to this day. So we don't say it here. Mikol makom yomim elu kevin chesmanu zman peronios en kedai lomer shechianu lazman ezen. Since historically. This time of the year has been a time of trouble for the Jewish people. We don't want to make the Shech Yano blessing thanking Hashem for bringing us to this day, because it's a time where a lot of bad things happen. We know that on Tisha B'Av, there were many tragedies that happened. On the, on the 17th of Tammuz, there were many tragedies that happened. And in general, this time of year, many tragedies befell the Jewish people, besides uh, what it just says in the uh, in the Gemara. Okay. The Hagra, the Vilnagon, the Beor, Holocaust, the Vilnagon argues because of the Huchomri Seir, he says this is an extra stringency. The Chena Tazma Fakrik was that also the Taz is not so clear on this law. The Alkain, Beshabas, in the Hachmer Bazet. The Balav Hachi, Harbe Achron, and Maskim, the Hakul Beshabas. So he comes out with a compromise. He says, the Mishnah Bura says that many uh, rabbis like the Vilnagon and the Taz don't really see this as a letter of the law thing where you're not supposed to. Make Shachianu. So he's, the, the Mishnah Bura says, since many rabbis argue with this, he comes with a compromise that on Shabbos you can make a Shachianu. So if you have a new suit and you buy it during the three weeks, you shouldn't put it on for the first time during the week, but you, you should wait till Shabbos. You wait till Shabbos, then you can make a Shachianu. Or if you have a new fruit, you shouldn't eat it during the week, you should wait till Shabbos to make a Shachianu. Now, there's one caveat here. If you look above in the Mishnah Bura and Sif Kat and Mem in 45, he says that you still shouldn't make a Shechianu on the Shabbos before Tisha B'Av. So the Shabbos of Shabbos Chazon, which this year is July 22nd, you should not have, uh, you should not make a Shechianu. However, for this year, you have one Shabbos left where you could do this. Let's say you just bought a new suit and you want to put it on. You realize you didn't realize, oh no, I'm, I, uh, I'm not supposed to make a Shechianu during, during the three weeks. So what you should do is you should wait till Shabbos. This Shabbos is July 15th, you should put on the suit, and then you can make your Sheikh Yanu, but you should not put on the suit two weeks from now, July 22nd, and make the Sheikh Yanu then. Okay. Al Pri o Al Malbush. When Mela, Lo Yochel Ha Pri, Vlo Yobush Habeged, as what we just mentioned, because of Achronim, the Dish Muberis Muteris Lechel, Pri Bolo Sheikh Yanu, the Shemati Sam Vigram Nezek, La Ulovlad, the Chen Chola Gamkin, Mother Shapiris Post, Lot Tavas, Lachal Dram Tovi, Makam Choli, Lo Kablinan Alon. He says there's an exception to this rule of not making Shech Yano on a fruit. That is, a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman, sometimes she has a desire for certain foods, and it could harm the baby if she does not have the those fruits. So she shouldn't uh, have this stringency. Also, a sick person shouldn't go with the stringency. If he wants a new fruit that he hasn't eaten in a year, he should make a Shech Yano and eat the fruit. Okay, he's just making a differentiation between why we don't push off the Pidyon uh, Haben and why we would not make a Shachiyano if we see a new fruit. Now let's say the fruit, you have a fruit, but if you leave it to Tishbav, or if, even if we just mentioned you could, you could Eat the fruit on Shabbos and Shesh Shachiyano. But let's say if you leave it over that long, it's going to spoil. It's going to get rotten. 
So he says, "Marish lo yachol ishmar priyat shabbos mipnei shnis kachol kagon good gon is katanas di lavhachi yekachel bechal vishmerat shabbos." So what you should do is, if you have a fruit that is gonna spoil, then you should just buy it during the week, and then you can make the bracha on shabbos. He gives an example of small cherries. I guess small cherries will. Um, Will uh, will will spoil quickly. Will get rotten uh, quickly. So if you have a small, fr- if you have a fruit that if you I don't know maybe you bought it Sunday and if you wait till Shabbos it's a new fruit and it's gonna spoil then you could even make it a shechi on it during the week. Otherwise you wait till Shabbos. Okay, let's learn Yud Ches. Zarchli Zarm Yud Zayin Betamas Atish Ba'av Shelo Lelech Yichidi Me Arba Shos Atish Shos from the seventeenth of Tamas until Tish B'av, a, a person should not go outside by himself. From the fourth hour of the day until the ninth hour, there's a certain uh, evil spiritual force. Like we mentioned, that this time of year is very dangerous. A lot of bad things happen to the Jewish people. So a person should be extra careful. And this example is a person should not go out by himself. Usually there's certain halachas about people not going out by themselves at night. So this would apply even during the day from the fourth hour of the day to the ninth hour of the day. Also, a person shouldn't hit their students. Back in the day, teachers used to hit their students. So during even those back in those days, uh, you shouldn't hit your student during these times, because again, worry that bad things happen. We're worried that uh, you know, God forbid, something bad could happen if you hit him too hard. Now, some say that this walking by itself is only if you're in an unpopulated area. If you're like uh, you know, in New Jersey, it's not so common to find these places unless you're in some field somewhere, you know. But if you're in the Midwest or the West, you know, walking by yourself from city to city would not be a good idea during this time of year or during these hours. Says the Mishnah Berurah. Hainu misof arba at sof tasha means from the end of the fourth hour to the end of the ninth hour. Vchen yizar biyamim elu shlalelech ben chamal etzel. Also, there's a thing about not going between back and forth between the sun and the shade. Also, some seems some some sort of uh, negative spiritual force. Vulo yaku hatamidim you shouldn't hit students. Mefarish bemedrish da filu beretzua even with a belt you shouldn't hit them. Yesh lizar we kavanas harei kasher sheis alba yamim mehem now. Another topic, the Arizal, the great Arizal, says that during these days a person should mourn for the for the temple. After midday, he should cry for a half hour. So back in the day, people, the destruction of the temple really meant a lot to people. They would spend a uh, half hour after midday, which I guess is around 1.30 right now. Midday doesn't mean 12 o'clock, it means midday between sunrise and sunset, or between dawn and when the stars come out, which is around 1.30 this time of year. And he says you should spend a half hour crying over the temple. So many of us might not be at that level where we feel the destruction of the temple so much that we could cry for a half hour. But during this time, we're, we're learning these halachas and learning these laws about mourning. But we shouldn't just be performing them in a perfunctory way. We should really think about what the meaning it is. So we should take so set, si- set, side a time, set aside some time during this time of year to think what we lost in the destruction of the holy temple, how we used to have a place where God's presence dwelt in the world that we could go, we could become inspired, we could connect with Hashem, and we no longer have that anymore. That doesn't exist. Hashem, we don't see Hashem's hand in creation as much as we used to. We don't see how He guides all events behind the scene as clearly as we once did. Once did, And that's a big loss. And if we if we don't appreciate that loss, then we should feel bad that we don't appreciate it. But taking some time during this time of year to contemplate these matters is definitely a very appropriate thing to do. So, okay, so just to summarize, first we learned about Shachianu, that a person should not make a shachianu during the three weeks. However, he could make a shachianu during Shabbos, except for the Shabbos before Tisha B'av. We learned that a person should not go out at night. By him, uh, a person should not go at night during the whole year, but even during this year, from the end of the fourth hour to the ninth hour of the day, a person should go out by himself. In an, in an unpopulated area, some people say even a populated area, and a person shouldn't hit their students. And uh, also we learned we should try our best to connect to the... Uh, loss of the temples, and with that, wishing everyone a great day. And next time, God willing, we will study the laws of Erev Tishbav, the day before Tishbav has also many halachas.